Okay, this is going to be the Algebra 2 uh, sample test uh, for 2018-2019 on Unit 6. Uh, this is a sample test a little bit different than the one that's given in regular Algebra 2. Uh, so, uh, see other videos. I have videos from before that go over that information. Okay, <clears throat> this is a considered a negative. All right, the biggest thing to figure out is your turn points. All right, I got one, two turn points. All right, so the idea to get the degree is you take your turn points and add one. Okay, so I have degree three there. Okay, now, the idea with the zeros of I and the real zeros, okay, is if you take the real plus the I zeros, it should equal the degree. Now, if it slashes through, this counts for one. So really there's one here. So there's one real. So if I've got one real and a degree three, then there has to be two, because one plus two would give me three. This is also a negative, all right? There is one turn point there. That means I'd have degree two, all right? It does not cross, so that would be zero. So the only way I can get to two is to also have z uh, two uh, for that. Okay, this would be a positive. Okay, there are two turn points. There are degree three. Now, I've got one that slashes through and one that touches. So there's three total there, okay? So if I got three and I have a degree of three, that means that has to be zero. Okay, moving on to this one. This is also a negative. That's one, two, three turn points. That means I have degree four. Now this counts for one, 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 and one. So that's four real. <coughs> so four plus this would have to give me this. So that would also have to be zero, okay? And you can mark them with an X if you want. I'm just trying to show you where they come from. All right, this would be one, this would be one. So I would have two. Uh, this is a positive. There are one, two, three turn points. So I would have a degree four. So if I have two and I need to get to four, this would have to be two. So the bottom line is these two numbers have to add up to this. The easiest to find that is the real. This is a positive. This is going to count for two, all right? <clears throat> My turn points, I have one turn point, degree two. So two plus what would give me two would have to be zero, okay? Find the coordinates of the turn points in your calculator. This is very easy. I'm going to go ahead and make a menu. I'm going to go to graph, <coughs> and I'm going to type in x cubed minus 5x squared plus 3x plus 12. Draw it. Okay, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see better. G solve max. One of the maxes is 0.3, 12.48. <coughs> uh, okay, G solve minimum, and the minimum is 3, 3. So those are the turn points. All right. Given the graph on the right, identify each turn point. Turns here, turns here. Pretty easy. Okay? <clears throat> now, to do these end behaviors, I would label this arrow. That's negative infinity positive. This is positive negative. All right? This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's negative 5, 0. This is 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So negative 2, 7. Now, all we care about are the x coordinates. So this would be a decrease. Then it hits there, it goes increase, and finishes with decrease. Okay, <clears throat> so it says identify the increasing interval. It increases from negative 5 to negative 2. Okay? Find the end behavior of this. What I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm very simply just going to graph that in the calculator, negative 5 x to the 6th plus x to the 5th plus 5x squared plus 3. Okay, <clears throat> when I draw it, I get that action going. Okay, so as you can see, it goes down like that. So 
<clears throat> it sort of does something like this. So it was like this, something like that. If I were to label that, that'd be negative, negative. That would be positive, negative. Okay? <clears throat> so as x approaches a negative infinity, y also approaches, so that would be 1. This would not be, well, let me make a mess of that. This would not be 1 because as x approaches negative infinity, y doesn't approach infinity. This would be positive and negative, so that would have to work as well. <clears throat> State the zeros in their multiplicity. That would be x equals 0. That would be x equals negative 5. That would be x equals 4. This would be a multiplicity of 2. This would not have any. This would have a multiplicity of 3. <clears throat> Write the zeros of the... Uh, the factored equation, okay, so it's x equals 3, so it'd be x minus 3 squared because of the multiplicity there, and then x equals negative 1. Write, <coughs> write it in standard form, okay, so what I would do there is I would take the x minus 3 and multiply, that's x, and x squared, negative 3x, negative 3x, and 9. <clears throat> the diagonals would combine. Negative 6. So that's x squared minus 6x plus 9. And I would just make this box one more time. <clears throat> and now I would just have that x plus 1 down the side. So that's x cubed. That would be 1x squared. That would be negative 6x squared. That would be negative 6x. That would be 9x. And that would be 9. So I'd have x cubed. Okay, 1 minus 6 would be negative 5. Negative 6 plus uh, 9 would be 3. And I have positive 9 there, so that's the standard form. Write the polynomial that has the following, the factored form. Okay, the factored form there. So this crosses at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. <clears throat> so what I would have there, x plus 6, since it turns at that, I would put squared, and that's what I have for that one. Okay? All right, write the equation. This will be a multiple choice question. My anchor point is 1, 2, 3, 3, negative 1. So I'd have x minus 3 cubed minus 1. And the idea here, if I go right 1, I would have to go down 1 to hit that. So I'd put a little negative 1 there. Okay, <clears throat> to graph these, I graph it just like I normally would. <clears throat> My anchor point here is going to be negative 3, 0. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and graph this in the calculator. x plus 3, cubed, draw, looks like that, g solve root, all right, is it negative 3, g solve y intercept, it's all the way, all the way up here at 27, all right, g solve min, all right, no minimum, g solve max, no max. Now all I got to do is sort of trace the shape, it would do something like this, okay, this right here, all right, my anchor point here would be 0, 2. <clears throat> Since I have a fraction, I'm going to use the fraction button. Let me put the negative out front. So negative 1 fourth, x to the fourth, plus 2. If I draw it, it looks like that. G solve root, negative 1.6. And 1.6, my anchor point 0, 2. G solve max is 0, 2. I don't have a minimum. G solve y intercept, I already have that. So what I would look, what I look for, something like this. Okay. All right. <clears throat> find the factors, find the solutions. So anytime I'm asked to do that, I go to equal, polynomial, this is degree 3, so I would do 2, negative 7, 11, 
a negative 4. <coughs> so my solutions are a half. And then the only thing that changes there is that part. So what I would write is a half. And then x equals 3 plus or minus i square root of 7 all over 2. Now, this I can convert into a factor very easily. Okay? This, since it's sort of crazy like that, I have to do the box. So I can put 2x cubed here. I can put negative 4 here. To get all these top ones, just divide. So I can divide this. Anything in this row, I can divide this way. So 2 divided by 2 would be 1x squared. Negative 4 divided by negative 1 would be positive 4. Okay? Then I would multiply. There's negative 1x squared. Now, I have to get negative 7x squared. So what I'd have to look at is what would I need if I'm at negative 1 to go to negative 7? Well, I have to add negative 6 to get to negative 7. Now, how did I know that? You could just guess and check. All right? Now, to get this going back, I just do division. Negative 3x. And those are the factors. Okay? Let's go to 18. <clears throat> so I go to menu and equal. I would do polynomial. I would type in 1, negative 1. Negative 5, negative 3. Okay, now, what that means is my 0 is x equals 3, and I got x equals negative 1 twice. So, as factors, that's x minus 3, x plus 1, x plus 1. And I'm good. I don't need to do anything else because I got all those can convert. All right? <clears throat> is this a factor? Well, the way we can check that is I go to equal, type that in, 2, 8, negative 3, negative 1. Okay? And in order for that to be the factor, I would need x equals 2. So that answer is no, because I didn't, I didn't have a solution of x equals 2. Okay? Question 20, what are the factors? What are the roots? Once again, I'm going into equal. I go 3, 7, negative 13, negative 5. Okay? I got a solution of 1.4. Right, so the only ones that I can convert to a factor, I got negative 1 third, would be 3x plus 1. And these other ones I can just write as decimals. 1.44. <coughs> Negative 3.44. All right. Now, I can't convert those. I'm going to have to use the box. Three x cubed, negative five, because this is a factor. Three divided by three, one x squared. Negative five divided by one, negative five. I multiply there. That's one x squared. Now, I'm trying to get to seven. The only way to go from one to seven, I think, is to add six. Yep, so that would need to be 6x squared. If I do 6 divided by 3, I get 2x, and those are the, other, those are the factors. <clears throat> what are the solutions for these? That's sort of a trick question. These things are the same. Okay. <clears throat> what is the factorization and the solutions? Equal, polynomial, degree 3, type it in 2, 1, 6, negative 18. Okay, so I get 3 halves, and then I get negative 1 plus and minus square root of 5. Okay, just leave that as that. This converts into 2x plus 3. To get the other one, I'm going to have to use the box. All right. 2 divided by 2 would be 1. 
x squared. Negative 18 divided by 6 would be negative 6. 1x squared times this would be 3x squared. Now, I need to get to 1x squared. Well, 3 minus 2 would give me 1. Negative 2 divided by 2 would be negative 1x. And those would be the factors. <clears throat> now, the idea here is the only thing that would change is the sign. Describe the nature of the roots. <clears throat> that is pretty easy. All right. If I go to equa, 1, negative 2, 8, negative 4. Okay. I have one real root. And as you see, I have two eyes. So that's two imaginary. So one real, two imaginary. Okay, 24. Once again, I'm going to go into equa. Now I take 8, 0, 0, negative 27. If I hit solve, I get 3 halves and I get two other crazy ones. So 3 halves would be 2x minus 3. I don't know, setting up the box like this makes it a lot easier because if you just write that there, <clears throat> you're good. So that would be 8x cubed, negative 27. 8 divided by 2 would be 4x squared. Negative 27 divided by negative 3 would be 9. Okay? So all I'm doing there is I'm just doing division. Okay? <clears throat> 8 divided by 2, negative 27 divided by negative 3, 9. Okay? So then this is negative 12x squared. These have to add up to my x squared term, which is 0. <clears throat> so that would have to be 12. 12 divided by 2 would be 6. Okay? When you get to these ones that have the y's, we pretend as if the y's are not there. And what I would type in is 1, 0, 0, 64. Okay? And I get x plus 4. The other ones a little crazy, so I'm going to put x plus 4 down the side, x cubed, 64, that's 1 divided by 1, which would be 1x squared, 64 divided by 4 would be 16, that would be a 4x squared, I have to get this term, so that would be negative 4x squared because I need the total of 0, then negative 4 divided by 1 is negative 4x. Now, since I have y's, I just put y, y, y squared, okay? 26, I just go back into equa, go to degree 4. I would now type 9, 0, negative 37, 0, 4. Okay, <clears throat> and here are my answers. I get 2, 1 third, and negative 1 third, all right, and negative 2. Okay, <clears throat> so I would get x minus 2, x plus 2. All right, <clears throat> this would be uh, 3x minus 1 and 3x plus 1. Now, I I'm good with this because all these numbers are fine. If you ever get an i, a i square root or a square root, you multiply the first and last terms. Okay, so I would have to multiply those, but I do not have to do that in this situation. 27. I'm going back to some composition, this would be the function I would start with. I would take out the, uh, the x and put a blank. That's what I fill in. All right, and since I have this, that means I have to distribute. 4x squared minus 12x plus 5. <clears throat> and nothing can combine there, so my answer would be d. Okay? Now, when they have f of g of negative 2, it starts out very similar. I fill in this, <clears throat> and because they have the negative 2, what I would do is I would store that. Alpha x, I'm going to store for x, and then I would type this in just like I see it. 45. And that's it. 
Okay, so two composition problems. All right. Um, <clears throat> this this chapter will take some practice. Okay. All right. Uh, the big things with the factoring. I'm going to go back to that real quick. <clears throat> to get these numbers up top, the big thing is you have to do division. You can divide anything along the same row. So anything inside can be divided by outside and find the top part. That's a couple things. Then the diagonal, when you have that, that's the big thing, is that these diagonals have to add up to equal your x squared term. All right? In this case, my x squared term was 0. That was negative uh, 12 plus 12. In some of the other situations, like here, I had to have 1 and 6 gives me 7. All right? Remember, to get the numbers up top, you do division. This chapter will take a little bit of practice and a little bit of time. If you work through it, you should be fine.